What's the first thing you learn when you start playing Go? Probably how to place the stones on the board and how to Atari. Atari is one of those things that feels so nice and satisfying. You're attacking, your opponent is defending, you're feeling powerful. You can do it over and over again. But is it always that good? Let's see this game right here. Both players took the corners and Black decided to attack immediately. So Black attaches. White responds. And Black cuts. This kind of crosscut, White has to handle it very carefully. In the game, Atari. White connects. Atari. Atari. Hadouken. Black extends and black is very strong. Black captured this white stone and sliced through white like a knife through butter. White feels like a strong boxer who, instead of punching his opponent, was punching the air. And after punching the air for a long time, he's feeling very tired. White has a weak group right here, weak stones on this side. If I'm white in this game, I just want to resign. I don't know what to do. And all of this happened because there were too many Ataris in this game. Every time you make an Atari, you're making your opponent stronger. So let's see how white should have handled this differently. With this kind of crosscut, it's actually a lot more powerful to simply extend. Instead of any Ataris, let's say white just extends like this. First of all, this move immediately threatens a ladder. If black doesn't do anything, white will capture the stone. And if black saves it like this, for example, well, white can keep pushing. And what, this stone now dies? This is too bad. And um, let's say if black wants to live in the corner, you can do that like this, for example. White extends. Black is alive, but now this move is sente. And after this, this is going to be sente. And this is going to be sente. Black will live very small with two points. And white will have all the outside influence. This is too good for white. So let's try something else. After this extension, what if black decides to sacrifice the corner like this? White extends. And white will take the corner. Black gets an outside wall. This way, white captures this black stone. The corner is settled and it's quite big, and black only gets a little wall. The corner feels much better. White is good. So it's a little counterintuitive, but in this situation, the simple extension puts a lot more pressure on the black stones than any Atari would. Now let me show you a couple more examples of this in Joseki. In this Joseki, black takes the corner, white approaches, and black plays elsewhere. So white makes one more move here and presses black down. Typically black responds like this, crawling along the third line and white gets a wall. But what if, instead of this, black chooses to counterattack? He pushes and cuts bravely. Now if you're white, what do you do? I've seen so many games where white got scared and simply Atari, push, giving this stone up, and black gets all of this territory. Are you happy as white now? But let's look at it this way. When you play here, trying to press black down, are you really planning to give the stone up in a few moves? I don't think so. So of course when black tries to attack and cuts, there is no reason to be afraid. White is strong here, so no Atari. Extend. This stone can be captured in the ladder. These stones are not alive yet. And there's an even more severe move. White can extend like this. Now, black stones are in danger, so they have to live. White makes a beautiful shape. And black is still not alive, so black has to play one more move. Black could, for example, jump. And now, black could, of course, escape with this stone. But it's not going to be easy. And white is feeling strong on both sides. Now let's see another star point Joseki. Let's say black takes the corner, white approaches, 
and white attaches here. Typically, black plays like this, white connects, and black gets this side and white gets the bottom. But what if black cuts here? This is a, um, a bit of a trick move. And if white simply Ataris automatically, black will give it up and descends like this. This is a Ponuki, so white gets a very good shape, but black gets a huge corner. And this corner is actually bigger and better than this Ponuki. Black can even Atari like this to make it safer, only because this Atari works. This stone cannot escape. If white tries to run, black blocks. So what was a better move? When black cuts, once again, a much better option is to connect here. Now, black has to take the stone in the ladder, which is again a liability, so black will probably need to add one more move when white gets a stone in this area and white takes the corner. This is an even result. When I see someone who plays every Atari automatically, I think of a nutcracker. A little nutcracker who only cracks nuts. That's what he does, he doesn't do anything else. And that's how some players play every Atari without giving it much thought. But that's not what Go teaches us. We have to adapt and improvise in different situations. So if you can see that you can capture some stones with Atari, play it. But in some other cases, when Atari doesn't do you much good, don't persist in playing it. Let's see one last example. This is another Joseki that you've probably seen many times before. Black attaches and pulls back. And usually white connects like this or like this, but there's an old fashioned move here. It would be a mistake for black to cut right now, but what if black cuts? Do you want to extend? Well, actually, in this case, it's a lot better to Atari. White has a helping stone right here, so when white Atari is in this direction, black has to bump into this white stone. And one more Atari, and black is captured in the ladder. This is a great success for white. But even if we imagine that black has a stone in this corner, so the ladder doesn't work, it's still very good to Atari. Atari like this, black bumps, and now we have to realize that we don't have to save everything. This stone is not very useful, so white can Atari from here. Maybe even one more Atari. And protect the cut. Now black got a few extra points and captured one stone, but white built a beautiful wall on the outside. This variation feels very good for white. Remember, don't Atari everything just because you can. Don't be a nutcracker. If you see that Atari gives you some immediate profit, if you can capture some stones, sure, you can do it. But if not, maybe a simple extension is going to do a much better job. But I understand that sometimes the temptation to play Atari is just too big. So here's a little something that can help you with that. It's a mini game called Atari Go. And I suggest you start playing this on a 9x9, and if this feels too small, you can go to 13x13. You place a cross cut like this in the middle of the board, black to play. The point of the game is to capture one stone of your opponent. Whoever captures the first stone wins the game. It's that simple. But you will soon discover that it's a lot easier to catch to capture your opponent's stones if you don't Atari immediately. So play around with this game, have fun with it, and now it's time for you to go to the practice section to solve some Atari or extension problems. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic. <laughs>